So when it comes to the pentatonic, pretty much everyone knows the classic first position. Now this is probably the most important shape, but I see a lot of top level professionals, I'm talking Slash, Eric Clapton, people like that, tend to mostly operate between this first position and one other shape. So in this video, I wanna talk about the other shape, this second most important pentatonic pattern, but I'm not only gonna show you the pattern, but show you how you can use it to create licks and solos. So let's start by learning the pattern and then we'll look at how we can use it to build licks. So we're going to be in the key of A minor here and normally you could think of your first position minor pentatonic as being built around that E minor shape bar chord there, the A minor at the fifth fret. Now instead of building around that E minor shape bar chord, we want to think of this additional position as being built around the A minor shape bar chord. So for A minor, we can play that here at the 12th fret, like this, and we want to build a pentatonic shape around this position, and that's going to look like this. So we've got 12 and 15 on the low E, and then 12 and 15 on the A, and then 12 and 14 on the D, 12 and 14 on the G and then 13 and 15 on the B and then 12 and 15 on the high E all together. An important way this differs from the first position pentatonic is the root note is no longer the lowest note here because this would be an E but we're in A minor so the root note is actually on the a string now at the 12th fret and then we get exactly the same note so normally we'd have a c d e g a c d e g in a minor here we get starting at the 12th fret on the a string a c d e g a c d e g so it's exactly the same notes just moved an octave higher and then on the low e we've just got a couple of notes from the scale down below e and g so you can think of those notes as being a couple of extras that you can use to lead into that root note there even though it's going to give you the same notes, having this slightly different shape really lends itself to different ways of playing and there's certain types of licks which work really really well in this position as we'll see in a moment. But not only that, having now this position and then combining it with this and then repeating that first position again up here and you can see why a lot of players find that here, here and here is enough real estate to cover pretty much everything they need on the guitar. So for the first lick of the solo, I was literally just playing straight up through the scale. Something like that. But there's a couple of little things to notice here. Firstly, these two lowest notes on the low E string, I just kind of use those as a pickup into this root note of A on the 12th fret of the A string. So it's like one, two, three, four, one. So I'm landing right on that first beat as the song kicks in with this big root note. The other thing you might notice is I'm just playing a couple of little microtonal bends there, just to give a bit of extra grease, a bit of life to some of these notes. And then of course ending with this big bend here, which leads us nicely in to talk about bending. So there's two notes within this shape that you're gonna find yourself bending a lot. And the first one you just saw there, the highest note on the high E string, a full bend up. Now if you think about it, this note here at the 15th fret is a G, so if we bend that up a full step, we get to an A, which of course is our root note. Now this is really useful having your root note there as a big bend up because 
You could use that to really climax some of your licks by going up to that note. The other note you're going to find yourself bending all the time is this highest note on the B string here. Now, I call this the universal pentatonic bend because it's got so many uses. You can either bend this up a full step when you want a really kind of in tune feel or let it go a little bit flat for a more bluesy kind of feel. Now, one thing that works really well with this note is the bend up and release down like that for a bit of blues along the way. Now I just want to talk about something I always talk about when we do these pentatonic videos, which is what I call the primary pentatonic box. So with your normal first position minor pentatonic shape, these four notes in the middle on the D and G strings, they're kind of the most important and they're really your home base for most soloing. You know, all those kind of licks come out from there. And this is what I call the primary pentatonic box. And whenever we look at another pentatonic position, for me, it's always important to find these same notes. So we've got a G, an A, a C, and a D. Now, as long as we know where these four notes are in any shape, then we can just get straight to soloing with them. So up to the shape we're looking at here at the 12th fret, we've got a G here, an A here, a C here, and a D here. So this is our primary pentatonic box in this position. Now, the slight difference here is we've got all the notes at the same fret when we're down here. But in this position, we need to kind of move up a fret when we go on to the B string. Now we can finger that in different ways and you might think that that's a bit of a hindrance and for some things it is but there's a lot of times when that actually helps having that gap particularly I find because when you're playing on the B string you're often using these notes here with that bend and then this A here at the 14th fret of the G string it's really easy to add that in with the finger in between those two that kind of lick So knowing that this is your primary pentatonic box here really helps you transfer anything you know from down here up to here, but also it kind of helps in some ways having this kind of one fret gap between the two strings. Now in the solo, you heard me play a lick with these notes, something like this. So all I'm doing there within this primary pentatonic box is 12th fret on the G string, hammer on to 14, and then 13 on the B string. So one, two, three, triplet rhythm, just repeat that over and over. Now this is an example, like I just mentioned, of where having this B string note up one fret makes this a lot easier to play in this position. Now this is at the end is just a classic lick from this primary pentatonic box using that bend on this B string note we just talked about. One thing to note, a little microtonal bend there just for a bit of extra feel. let's move on to look at how we can use double stops within our pattern. In a moment we'll look at some hammer-ons but let's start with some sliding double stops. So let's play 12 on the G string together with 13 on the B string. These notes G and C a perfect fourth apart make a really nice bright sound. Now we can slide both of those together up two frets and then back down again and just notice all these notes are within our pentatonic shape and it's such a beautiful sound with those nice bright fourths together like that. Then we can do the same thing on the D and G strings but this time the two notes are going to be at the same fret. So we've got 12 and 12 on the D and G strings, slide those up to 14 and back down again. Now combining those with the notes on the G and B strings together we get that kind of sound which I really really like. Then let's look at hammering on instead of sliding. So starting in the same position, 12 on the G, 13 on the B, 
Now, play both those notes together and then hammer on to the 14th only on the G string. And then pull off again. A really nice sound. And then same again on the D and G strings together. We're playing 12 and 12 and then hammer on to the 14th only on that D string. Combine the two. It's really nice again. In the solo, I use these double stops to add extra weight to my playing as the energy in the track built, and I played a combination of these slides and hammer-ons. Then lastly, let's talk about the blue note. And whenever we play the pentatonic, we're only ever one note away from the blues scale. So by knowing where we can find the blue note, we get instant access to those extra bluesy sounds. So there's a couple of places within this pattern up here that we can find the blue note. The first one I'll show you is here. So 16th fret on the B string. So we've already got frets 13 and 15 on that string. So then if we add in fret 16 as well, we get a flat five, an E flat, and that gives us this extra bluesy sound. You hear that? Now generally, you don't want to linger on this blue note, and what you saw me doing in the solo was these little flicks, little slides, back to the note below. So I'm playing that blue note, and then immediately sliding back into the 15th fret into our pentatonic note something like that. But another cool trick I did just before we got to that was this. A double stop kind of string on string bend, so playing both the B and E strings at the 15th fret and then bending up just on the B string. And now this note, it kind of passes through that blue note and hints at it. So that's a pretty cool technique, which brings in a bit of blues flavor as well. Then the other place we can find the blue note within this pattern is here at the 13th fret on the D string. So we've already got 12 and 14 on that string. So we're just adding in 13 in between. Now, what you saw me doing in the solo there was playing 13, hammer on to 14 and then 12 on the G string and playing that in a triplet rhythm, one, two, three, one, two, three. Something like that. And that's a pretty cool technique which you can use in lots of places just to bring in that extra blues feel. So if you made it to the end, thanks for watching, I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next video.